Today I want to talk a little bit more about guided math. In math workshop, you always have a period, you know, a section where it's guided math, the student activity period. So a couple of key things. One, your group should be no more than three to five kids. No more. Six is a tipping point. All the research says that. NCTM found that actually in some of their research as well. Two, you, so, so you're going to pull your kids in a guided math group. There's three to five kids and you're talking about something very specific. And that's really important that you're talking about something very specific in your guided math group. It's not just a random, like these are the low kids, these are the high kids. No, you're talking about something very specific. I'm teaching these kids to count by fives. I'm teaching these kids to count by tens. I'm teaching these kids to count quarters. I'm teaching these kids to count dimes and nickels, right? So I'm teaching these kids to count pennies, right? Um, so I'm teaching these kids how to add fractions with like denominators because they're missing that piece. Although in the big picture, we're working on adding fractions with unlike denominators. I know that adding fractions with like denominators comes first. So in my guided math group, I'm going to catch these guys up and I'm going to move them on, but I'm going to also close gaps. Guided math groups are for closing gaps and for going deeper in the content that you're doing. They're also for going ahead. You have kids, they know it, they understand it, they get it conceptually and procedurally, and then you can go ahead, right? So in your guided math group, you're trying to reach and meet and greet and work with the students where they are. And um, so in guided math, 90% of what happens is kids doing math. That's important. They sit down, you tell them, this is why you're here, this is what we're going to do while you're here, and then they start doing it. And then when they leave, you say, this is what we did, right? Or you ask the kids and have a conversation. What did we do today? So guided math, small group. It's better to have two groups of three than one group of six. Because oftentimes people will group their kids by according to how many kids they have. It's better to have two groups of three than one group of six. I'm going to say that again and again and again because it's true. Because in the group, you're trying to reach the kids. And if you have a big group, why, why are you doing it then? Because if you have a group, big group, you can't reach all the kids. You can't say, how do you know? Are you sure? Is there another way? Can you explain what he just said? Can you explain what she just said? Right? And that's what the kind of stuff you're trying to do. You're trying to really infuse those mathematical practices. You're trying to get kids to communicate. You're trying to get kids to represent their thinking. You're trying to get kids to talk about the math that they're doing. So you're, you're, you're using tools. All of that stuff is happening in the guided math group. Those practices and processes, they they uphold, they really are the pillars for all of the content that you're teaching in your guided math group. Um, and it should last no more than 15 minutes attention span, no more. If you're deep into a guided math lesson and you're 30, 40, 45 minutes in, I don't, I don't know what you're doing because it's not guided math. Guided math is 10 to 15 minutes and you have kids thinking. Oftentimes it's a homogeneous group if you're working on a skill or a concept, but other times it's a heterogeneous group. So it just depends on what you're doing with kids. I think it's both and, I don't think it has to be either or. Um, and so that's what your, your guided math time is really about, right? And manipulatives, that's the other piece. You should be using them with all the kids. Look at these red and white counters. This is more than a first and second grade idea, right? Look at these unifix cubes. This is more than a first and second grade idea. These are great. You know, these are great for teaching addition and subtraction and multiplication and division. These are great for teaching area and perimeter and fractions. These are great for all of those things. All kids should have access to really good manipulatives and you just phase them out. Right? Some kids phase out sooner than others, but in your guided math group, you're building concept. Because people will tell me, oh, they get it, they don't need the manipulative. What do they get? Right? Do they get the math or do they just get the procedure? Because oftentimes when people tell me, oh, they get it, they get the procedure. When I ask kids about the math, they can't tell me. All right, so um, those are just a few highlights to think about when you're thinking about guided math. Happy mathing.